Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for that uh, very warm welcome. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to express my gratitude and my appreciation of the kind of work that you do. Your work is critically important. And I want you to know how important you are, were, to Jack Layton and our family. He had enormous respect and admiration for all the work that you've done. And the fact that you're taking your time, your volunteer time, and your resources, and your talents, to support everyone that is facing prostate cancer and their loved ones. It is so important and so valuable. So to all the network leaders and to the spouses that support them, that love them, take the bow. We want to say thank you to all of you. Well, yeah, let's see them. I <laughs> You are uh, the living proof of the big message in Jack's life. Hope is better than fear. Hope is better than fear. Let me repeat some of the words from Jack's final letter to Canadians that he wrote not a long time ago. To other Canadians who are on journeys to defeat cancer and to live their lives, I say this. Please don't be discouraged that my own journey hasn't gone as well as I've hoped. You must not lose your own hope. Treatments and therapies have never been better in the face of this disease. You have every reason to be optimistic, determined, and focused for the future. My only advice is to cherish every moment with those you love at every stage of your journey. He wrote these words, and that was Jack's message for everyone living with cancer. And for all Canadians, what he truly believed every moment of his life. That hope is better than fear, optimism is better than despair, and love is better than anger. So don't be angry with that disease. Let's conquer it with love. And every person in this network is living proof of these values. You are proof of those words, and that's why you're inspiration, not just to me, but to all Canadians, and to all Canadians that live with cancer of every kind. Now, last month in the House of Commons, the Prime Minister and other party leaders made some beautiful tributes to Jack. And I said in my response that it was easy to be optimistic and hopeful when Jack was around, but the tough part is now. But you make it easier because you share that optimism and that hope as you are dedicated to making positive change and to help each other and the ones you love. And even the ones that you don't know, you are making change in their lives. And I look out, I see you all in your blue striped ties. Jack had over a hundred ties. He loved ties. <laughs> but his blue striped one was <laughs> most special to him, even though it was not exactly the same political color. <laughs> it's hard to find that NDP orange in that blue stripe, but he loved to wear that blue tie. It was very proud, it was a very proud day for him and for all of us when the Prime Minister and every members of Parliament, all the cabinet ministers, every member of Parliament uh, in the House of Commons wore the blue striped ties in the House of Commons after Jack had announced his prostate cancer. He was very moved and very, very touched. But above all, he felt very blessed to have the opportunity to speak out about prostate cancer and to do so in a national stage. Something that he knew would help other 
men to speak out and speak about this disease. And we know the more we can speak out, the more we can share, the more power we have together. Because we know that speaking out is the first step to dealing with it. So it makes me smile to see all the blue stripes here and the blue ties and the blue handkerchiefs. And, and as you know, Jack has a pretty good mustache. <laughs> I'm slightly biased, of course. So it also makes me smile to imagine and think how many of you would be growing mustaches next month uh, as part of your wonderful Movember fundraising and awareness programs. You get to raise funds and grow some handsome and sexy mustache at the same time. <laughs> it's a great thing that Movember uh, has been growing every year. It, uh, it started a few years ago, and it only raised a, hundred, a few hundred thousand dollars. And soon enough, a few years later, over $20 million. Isn't that amazing? It's the work of a collective people saying that, yes, we are going to deal with this disease. And it tells me, something tells me this year is going to be the biggest yet. I can see it, yeah? It's, it's true? Yes, it will be the biggest yet. I can see that. I can see the determination in your eyes. I can see that, yes, I'm going to persuade. Think about the hardest person you're going to persuade to grow that mustache. And uh, in Ottawa, we have a team of New Democrats determined to grow the best mustaches in town. And we call it New Democrats. <laughs> The emphasis is the mole. <laughs> now, it's going to uh, require the Mo sisters, I'm the one of the Mo sisters, to support and raise, raise, raise the funds. We've set the target to triple the amount that we've raised last year, and in memory of Jack also. So Parliament Hill, in a few weeks' time, should be a very hairier place to be. <laughs> Not scary, just hairy, <laughs> hairier. <laughs> and uh, all the money that's raised in November will help you expand your programs and it will help outreach and uh, connect with many other people. It will help you raise awareness. It will get your message that it is our time out there. And it will tell people that the importance of early screening. The importance of doing the PSA test is just a blood test. It takes a few minutes. It's not that scary. Speaking about scary, it means early detection. It means whether you will, you, you will find out if there's a, uh, aggressive cells or not. And you know how important early detection is because early detection means, for some people, early action. And, uh, and that can save lives. Jack uh, took the PSA blood test every year because his father had prostate cancer and he knew that he was at risk. So Jack was relentless in pushing other men to get tested. Uh, soon after his diagnosis, two of his friends, very good friends, they're very young, uh, went and took the PSA test and they required action. Uh, and they took early action, took, got early treatment, and both are in remission, and they are leading full, active, and productive lives like many of you here, like all of you here. <laughs> so the work you're doing is allowing more and more men across Canada to address prostate cancer directly head on. 
Another great contribution you're making is helping people learn more about prostate cancer, its impact, its treatment programs. Then they can understand that they do not need to fear. They know how to manage the disease because of your education effort. And this understanding is vital. It is no, vital not just for the person that are living with cancer. It's also vital for their spouses. It's vital for the family members. I tell you, I went to every appointment that Jack had when he went and saw the doctors. And occasionally I would do the research and I would back him up, remind him the questions that he might not have remembered to ask the doctors. And it just helped both of us in managing this disease. And thank you, and, and Jack was able to connect with a very supportive team. This team gave him advice on diets, on exercise programs, and he exercised. He did that exercise uh, program, the regime that he had, at least 45 minutes to an hour every day. And during the election, I can't, he was at the uh, elliptical machine and I was having a hard time trying to keep up with him in the elliptical machine. And it was really important because um, he, uh, he worked, he had fun, it kept him in, in uh, good energy, uh, keep him in shape. So he ran a great campaign, connecting people in, a, in an amazing way. And he was able to accomplish a lot uh, after his diagnosis, perhaps uh, like many of you. And perhaps the knowledge of cancer makes you realize make all of us realize, I myself is a, um, not prostate, <laughs> um, a thyroid cancer survivor from seven, eight years ago, um, how precious life is, how important it is for all of us to, leave, to live our dreams, to live every moment to the fullest, and to take time to tell other people how much we love them, but also take the time to help support other people. So everything you do here in support of Prostate Cancer Canada Network is critically important. This network does more than saving lives. It helps others enrich their lives. And because of your work, people's lives become meaningful and they are no longer fearful. And you do that through funding, research, through your advocacy, through education, through having fun together, through knowing new friends, learning new, new uh, techniques or, or treatment programs, doing more studies. And you should be tremendously proud of what you have accomplished together. I'm so proud to be here with you, feeling that energy, feeling that support, and just immensely inspired by all of you. But we cannot do this alone. We need partnership. That's where the government comes in. We need the government's leadership in fighting against cancer. We need it at every level, provincial level, municipal level, federal level. And Madam Minister, I am so glad that PSA testing in Nova Scotia is free of charge. It, it is. It, it is true. Because it's not true in my province of Ontario. Some of you may know that. PSA testing should not be charged. You, because it should be every province in, in territories across Canada PSA testing should be done for free. If people, yes, that is true. Because you don't want the men to feel hesitant. They have enough excuses already. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you've heard them all, huh? That you want them to say, yeah, if I, 
you know, I, I should, I'm over 40, just turned 40, maybe I should get tested, I, especially if my father had prostate cancer. So I don't understand why it isn't covered across Canada. So that's something we need to work together to change. Every man in Canada should have the opportunity to receive the screening they may need. And the same holds true to all medications. It should be affordable. All vital cancer drugs should be affordable for everyone that needs it. And that's not always the case. They are not all necessarily covered. And that too must change. As well, we need government to take action to allow people to take time off to see their doctors. Because cancer cells comes and goes and you don't know when it would come and when it would go, when it would become active. Not only the survivors needs time and flexible time from their workplace to see doctors to get treatment, their spouses, their loved ones also need the time to be able to support their partners. I was very blessed that I have a job, that I could be very, uh, very busy, but there are times that I can control, that I can go to see the doctor with Jack. And that's important, but a lot of people don't have that luxury of time and money, because if you are penalized by not working, you may not be able to afford to go with your spouses to to uh, go see the doctors or go to the treatment that person may need. So we need to make it, uh, make our workplace, make uh, our, our labor laws and our employment uh, insurance law more friendly for people that are living with cancers. And the list goes on. But we need more than a shopping list. There are many demands in the healthcare system, and the total answer is not just about healthcare funding and healthcare provision. What we need is the political leadership to achieve change in society that would do most good, the change that would improve awareness and prevention and reduce the disease. Cancer has been growing at a rate that is very, very fast. We know that. So we need to look at the whole context of cancer prevention. More and more research and evidence show links between the environment and cancer. The food we eat, the toxins in the environment, whether it's the herb or the, uh, the air. Think, for example, of the research about red meat and prostate cancer. The evidence of lower incidence in Japan, where red, less red meat is eaten than in North America. Is there a connection? We need groups like Prostate Cancer Canada and other focus groups and research organizations to raise awareness and press for government leadership. We need political leadership to challenge and regulate, to press for safety standards, nutritional standards, education, and awareness. And that's a very tough battle because there are so many entrenched interests that resist change and action. One of the first thing that Jack Layton did when he was the chair of the Toronto Board of Health in the 90s was say that smoking shouldn't be allowed in public space. When he first addressed that, it was very difficult. How dare you question my right to smoke? Is my freedom to smoke in public space? How could you possibly uh, uh, question that? But now, now it's, you know, what's the problem? Um, even though the link between smoking and cancer was very clear, and yet that great long battle for smoke-free environments was not easy, and uh, it took policies, it took government, uh, uh, it, it took uh, uh, regulations, and it didn't cost any money. 
putting warning labels on cigarettes or telling people that they can't smoke in, in a public space um, didn't cost a lot of tax dollars. What it did take was political leadership. It's not expensive. It takes courage to take that political action. And if we are to see major impacts on cancer in our lifetime, government must have the courage to address these issues and also take action. Because we know that prevention costs a lot less than treating the disease. So if government play more in an active role, proactive role in these areas, it will help the strain on the healthcare system. Even more, it will help people lead more productive lives, contribute to the economy, live longer, better quality of life. It's a long-term project, and it's something that I think government should do. That's the role that Jack always believed in, that government should play a role. That it's the reason he went into public life, to try and make change. And he didn't want to just make change himself. He wanted to make change together with people, which is why he always said that when we are together, we have the power to make changes together. That has always been his motto. And when I see you as the network leaders coming together under Prostate Cancer Canada, I know the power you have. And that is why we have every reason to be optimistic, because I know together we have the power to make changes. So you've already shown Canadians how change can happen. You have already made a difference, big and small ways. You have already given so many people more reasons for hope and optimism. And from the bottom of my heart, I say to you, thank you for reinforcing my own hope and optimism. Thank you for being the living proof that hope is better than fear. So let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic, and we'll change the world. It is time, and it is your time. It is our time to change the world together. Thank you for allowing me to address you today. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.